so hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and in this video i will cover problem d that is non zero zor from fourth chef starter 55 and maybe i will also make a video on problem d uh, sorry on problem e that is ball sequence so stay tuned for that as well and in this video we'll solve non zero zor so let's start with that in the problem we have been given an area of size n where n is around 10 to the power 5 and we have been given some area a so a1 a2 a3 so on up to an and we have been defined something called a good array a good array is an array such that no sub array has zor equal to 0 so a good array is an array in which no sub array has zor equal to 0 then we have been defined an operation in one operation you can choose any element ai you can choose any element ai from the array and set it to x where x is an integer from 0 up to 10 to the power 10 to the power 10 so that is the operation so you want to apply these operations on your array a and convert it into a good array and you want to report the minimum number of operations that are required to do so minimum number of operations so given some array a you want to convert it into a good array where a good array is an array uh, in which no sub array has zor equal to 0 and for the same you can use an operation the operation is you can set any element ai equal to x where x is from 0 up to 10 to the power 10 to the power 10 and you have to report the minimum number of operations that are required to convert your array a into a good array so i hope the problem is clear and before we start with the problem i would recommend you guys to solve this problem count sub arrays with zor 0 this is a very well known problem and the logic that we will use here is kind of inspired from this problem so i would recommend you guys to solve this problem first so first try to solve the problem counting sub arrays with zor 0 if you guys have solved this problem then the logic that we will using the problem you will be very much okay with that right because it, it is a very well known logic so let's start with the solution so the very first problem is how do you find sub array with zor 0 for example if we have a1 a2 a3 a4 so on up to let's say i am at some index ar and i am ending at an Let's say my zor up to index ar. Let's say my prefix zor up to this is let's say r, right? Then let's say uh, I want to find number of sub arrays or a sub array that has zor equal to zero and that is ending at index ar, right? Let's say there is some index al here. So I want to find this index al. So how can how can I find this index al? So for this, we can use the property that proper property of zor that zero zor anything is is equal to itself. So zero zor r should be equal to r, right? Because it is a property of zor. As as I know, my prefix zor is equal to r, and my zor from a l to a r is equal to zero. So I know my prefix zor that is a one zor a two zor a three, so on up to zor a r is equal to r, and my zor from a l A L plus one, so on up to zor A R is equal to how much? It is equal to zero, right? So if I zor both of these terms, right? If I call this equation one, and if I call this equation two, if I zor both of these terms, I will get A one zor A two zor A three, so on. A L zor A L two times, right? Because one time from the first equation and one time from the second equation, so I will get A L zor A L two times. I will got I will get AL plus one zor AL plus one and so on up to AR zor AR is equal to zero zor R. So these AL zor AL will cancel out with themselves. So you will get how much? You will get A one zor A two zor A three zor A four so on up to zor of AL minus one is equal to R. Right. So that means the so that means the zor of values from A one to AL minus one will be equal to R. Prefix zor here is equal to r, right? So if you want to like count the count the count the number of sub arrays that have zor zero ending at some index r, you can just count the number of elements that has the prefix zor equal to r before index r, right? 
सो नंबर ऑफ सब एरेज विथ जोर जीरो एंडिंग एट इंडेक्स आर इज हाउ मच इज इक्वल टू इंडेक्सेज विथ प्रीफिक्स जोर इक्वल टू आर लेस देन इंडेक्स आर लेस देन इंडेक्स आर राइट सो दैट इज द थिंग सो नाउ यू हैव नाउ यू हैव फाउंड सब एरेज विथ जोर जीरो नाउ वी हैव फाउंड सब एरेज विथ जोर जीरो राइट सो नाउ वी हैव टू अप्लाई सम ऑपरेशन नाउ वी हैव टू अप्लाई द ऑपरेशन ऑन द सब एरेज टू मेक इट इन टू अ गुड एरे राइट बिकॉज यू वॉन्ट टू रिमूव सब एरेज विथ जोर जीरो सो वी हैव टू नाउ अप्लाई ऑपरेशन ऑन दिस सब एरे एंड एज वी वॉन्ट टू मिनिमाइज द ऑपरेशन वी हैव टू सी हाउ डू वी हैव टू अप्लाई द ऑपरेशन सो लेट से we have a1 a2 a3 right so on up to al so on up to a al al plus 1 al plus 2 so on up to ar right let's say my zor of this array sub array is equal to 0 right so now i have to apply an operation on this sub array now i have to apply one operation on this sub array to make its zor to make its zor equal to non zero so now the question arises where do i apply the zor and how do i like sorry where do i apply the operation and how do i apply the operation right because in an operation you can set ai equal to x so how do i choose x and how do i choose this index i so we have to choose an index like which will minimize our operations so how can we choose that so to choose that i will make a lemma that it is always optimal It is always optimal to choose index R for operation. To choose index R for operation. Why so? We can draw some examples and show you that. For example, we have AL, AL plus one, so on up to index AR. Let's say zor of this is equal to zero, and let's say we have some indexes AR plus one, AR plus two, AR. Let's say up to some AR dash. then if we apply operation on some other index let's say we apply an operation here let's say we apply an operation here at some index l dash then there is a chance that there is a chance that zor of elements from a l dash plus 1 up to index a r dash can be equal to 0 right it is a it is a possibility that zor of elements from a l dash plus 1 up to a r dash can be equal to 0 right so like if you are applying operation here it is useless right because uh you have two uh, you have two sub arrays with zor 0 and in one operation you are only eliminating one sub array right so as you can see index ar is lying on the intersection if i call this let's say sub array 2 and if i call this sub array 1 previously you were applying operation on al dash and it was only dealing with sub array 1 it was only dealing with sub array 1 so you had to apply an extra operation for sub array 2 but as we know we have index ar and ar will always lie on the intersection if there is some intersection ar will always lie on the intersection so if we just switch out if we just switch ai equal to some like very large number very large number right it will also deal with sub array 1 as ar is also part of sub array 1 and ar will also deal with sub array 2 right because ar is also part of sub array 2 so that's why it is always optimal to apply operation on on index r right because if there are some intersections uh, index ar will always lie in the intersection and it will take care of multiple arrays at uh, it will take care of multiple sub arrays at same time so you don't have to take care of every sub array separately right so that is the logic so if i have to do a dry run i will do something like this uh, let's do a dry run of whatever algo will look like so if i have a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 a7 a8 a9 let's say something like this right so let's say start iterating from here i will keep a value called current zor right so my current zor is let's say here it is let's say 5 here it is, here it is let's say 4 here it is let's say 3 here it is let's say again 
right? So if my now my ZOR is equal to five here, and I have seen an index where ZOR was five previously, so I know my subarray ZOR of this is equal to zero, right? My ZOR of this subarray is equal to zero. So now I have to apply an operation on this. Now I have to apply an operation on this. So I will always apply operation on AR. So here it is A4. So I will apply apply uh, apply an operation on A4, and I will set a very large bit, right? Because my x is from zero up to ten the power ten the power ten. So I can set a very large bit in it. So let's say I set ten the power fifth bit. I will set ten the power fifth bit in A4. As I have set such a large bit, as I have set set such a large bit. Now my ten the power five bit will always be set. Will always be set in ZOR. Will always be set in ZOR if I include A4, right? So going forward, if you if you will take A4, your ZOR will never be zero, right? Because I have set ten the power fifth bit in A4. So if you try to include A4 in any of your further ZORs, it will never have ZOR equal to zero. It will never have ZOR equal to zero, as it will always have. It will always have ten the power fifth bit set. So as you can see, now A4 is useless for you. Now A4 is useless because if you like, if you try to include it in any more subarrays, it will always have non-zero ZOR, right? So you can say you have dealt with your array up to this point. You have dealt with your array up to this point. So you don't need to ignore. Uh, so you, so you don't need to think about the falling part. No? So you can you can just ignore this part. And you can again like think of this as a new array. Think of this as a new array, and start the same thing again. Let's say your ZOR here is equal to six, here is equal to five, here is equal to three, here is equal to seven, here here is equal to six. So you again find same ZOR. You have ZOR six again. So your subarray of uh, so your ZOR of falling subarray is equal to zero. So again you will apply operation on A nine. Again you will set A nine. You will set ten the power. Uh, ten the power five plus one bit. Ten the power five plus one bit. In A nine, right? So as you have set ten the power five plus one bit again, if you try to include A nine in any more subarrays, it it will never have ZOR equal to zero. So you can again break your array here and say that you have dealt up to array at this point, and you can just continue again, right? So that will will be the logic that we will use in the solution. So if I have to summarize it once again, let's summarize the solution. So let's write summary. Uh, initialize my current ZOR equal to zero, right? And you can like iterate over the array. Iterate over the array. Let's say from index i one to n. And current ZOR, and you can also keep a breakpoint. You can also keep a breakpoint here. For example, uh, my breakpoint here are here. This is my breakpoint one. So every time you find a subarray with ZOR zero, you will update the breakpoint, right? Because as you are able to see here, we have ZOR five, and I have also seen five previously. But I don't need to look past breakpoint one, right? So whenever I get my ZOR equal to zero, I will update update breakpoint one. So if I again get my ZOR five, I will not look past breakpoint one, right? Because I only care about things that are after breakpoint one now. So every time I find my ZOR equal to zero, I will update breakpoint and I will say that only look after the breakpoint. Things that that were before the breakpoint are useless to us now, right? So I will. Also, initialize breakpoint with equal to minus one. So initially, the breakpoint is minus one. Or if you are if you if you are using one index array, you can say breakpoint is equal to zero. Right. So your current ZOR is how much? Every time you iterate through an element, you will set your current ZOR is equal to current ZOR ZOR your element. So let's call it AI. And if you have seen, if you have seen ZOR equal to current ZOR ZOR equal to current ZOR. After breakpoint, you have seen ZOR equal to current ZOR after breakpoint. Then you are then you have found a subarray with ZOR zero. Then you have found a subarray with ZOR zero. So you can update your breakpoint. You can update your breakpoint. So your current breakpoint is index i. Your current ZOR 
is now zero, right? So you will reset your current ZOR and you will update your breakpoint. And now your answer will also increase, right? Because you have to apply an operation to take care of this subarray. So now you have to apply an operation to take care of this subarray. Otherwise, if you have not seen before, otherwise or else, if you haven't seen ZOR before, if you have not seen current ZOR before, just say that uh, like update update you have seen current zor at index i so the following thing is very similar to counting sub arrays with zor zero right so that's why i was saying to solve that problem first because it will help you see the logic behind this so that is the solution initialize current zor equal to zero breakpoint equal to zero uh, like start iterating and like uh, keep updating your current ZOR. If you find a ZOR that you have seen before, update your breakpoint, current ZOR, and update your answer. Otherwise, just say that, yeah, I have seen current ZOR and keep iterating forward. So, that is the solution. And if you guys want to see the code for this, uh, here's the code. So, I have my uh, value n. So, I will take my size n and I will take in the array. And I will keep a map index. It will help me to check. Positions of ZOR, position of ZOR. So, like format of this is your ZOR value, your ZOR, and vector of in indexes with prefix ZOR equal to one. Right? So I have my current ZOR equal to zero and I have my answer equal to zero and my breakpoint equal to minus one because I am using zero index, right? So if you are using zero index, you have to initialize breakpoint equal to minus one. Otherwise you can use zero as well, right? Like it is just implementation. How do you want to implement that? So initially my index minus one has ZOR zero. So I will append index of zero. That is my index minus one has a ZOR of zero. So I will start iterating over the array and I will update my current ZOR equal to current ZOR, ZOR VI. And if lower bound, that is, I have seen, I will update the index current ZOR dot begin current ZOR dot end and to the breakpoint. If it is not equal to current ZOR dot end, that is, I have seen the following ZOR at a point after my breakpoint. Then I know my, I have found a subarray with ZOR zero. So I, update, I will update my current ZOR equal to zero. I will update my breakpoint equal to I and I will update my answer. Otherwise, I will just like uh, push the index. That is, I have seen value current ZOR at index I. So I will, I will push that into my index map and in the end i can just print out my answer and that will be the solution so that is the entire solution and if you guys have a doubt feel free to join my discord server i will be more than happy to answer your doubts there and that was that is it for this video and i will see you guys in the next one bye bye also if you guys don't know continue Newton school is offering a full stack development course the course is uh, over six months long and it is totally based on pay after placement model and you don't have to pay anything there is zero hidden fees there is zero upfront fees and they are granting you a minimum package of rupees 5 lakhs and the average package is rupees 7 lakhs and the highest package is over rupees 26 lakhs so it is a very great opportunity also all their mentors are from top mncs like google flipkart zomato etc also they will get you placed into the top mncs as well like google flipkart zomato uh, so uh, you can learn from the mentors that are working at those companies and you can land a job at those companies yourselves Also, you don't need to worry if you guys think yeah, I'm coding aati nahi hai, maybe fresher mein bhi nahi aata hai. the course is over six months long and they will teach you from scratch So you can still sign up for this and if you guys are looking for a career in the tech field This is a very uh, this is a very great head start that you should sign up for and if you uh, Want to land a job. I highly uh, I highly vouch for this and uh, if you guys want to sign up there will be a link down below and you can go and sign up from there So yeah, you know, be sure to sign up for this and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye